hidden gem is defined as something which is extremely outstanding and not many people may know about. So, with the vast library of Switch games out there, let's take today to help wade through the crap and find the great. Welcome to Crab Fight. Oh yeah! This game is absolutely silly. I mean, how can it not? We are controlling giant crabs and making them fight, causing mass chaos and destruction for our own sick amusement. Obviously, the gameplay isn't refined in something like this. You will not be seeing Crab Fight pop up in EVO tournaments. But that's not the point. The controls are very chaotic and ragdoll, so to speak. Think of something like Gang Beasts or Quop. Like, I guess if you're really good at wonky physics games, you can make a Red Lobster dinner out of your opponent. But it's way more fun to just button mash and hope for the best. This game ain't no joke though, man. There's 23 types of playable crap. 23! I'm no seaologist, but are there really that many different kind of crabs out there? After every fight, you'll be able to level up and boost your stats, as well as equipping your weapon of choice to take into battle. For a game about giant crabs just throwing their bodies into each other, they really make it hype! It feels so satisfying to lay in a combo or just absolutely decimate your opponent. Yeah! You just got crabbed! This song is the only thing missing that would make this game a perfect 10 out of 10. This fight is brought to you by Joe's Crab Shack. Win, lose, or draw. It's the people of this town that are the real winners. Welcome to Donut County! What's with the food themed game so far? Mmm, crabs and donuts, how delicious. Anyway, in Donut County you play as a hole. Hole... for Smash? As this hole, it's your job to eat and swallow everything you can and put into the void. It's very similar to Katamari Damacy in that aspect, just playing as this destructive force causing chaos for everything in your path. The more you manage to eat up, the bigger the hole gets. It's really addicting and relaxing, in a sick sort of way. The soundtrack is super peaceful, and the artwork is incredibly adorable. Like, man, I'm feeling kinda bad destroying everything they love and cherish. But at the same time, man, this is just too satisfying. I'm not a brain doctor, so I can't tell you if there's something subconsciously that makes humans addicted to just catching things and eating their insides like indecision to call you. Whatever, I'm not gonna question it. If you like Katamari and really want some more of that in your life, then Donut County can fill that void. I did a, you see, you see what I did? I did a pun! This game is straight up called Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. Also, damn it, this will be the last food themed game in this video. So, if I were to take an educated guess, in this game, you play as Turnip Boy, yes, you're very cute, and he's committed tax evasion. Like a hero! We should all be like Turnip Boy in that regard. So, the government threatens to ruin Turnip Boy's life unless he pays his taxes. So it's up to us to help him. We'll go around this village doing all kinds of fun odd jobs for money. Things like farming, protecting the crops from beasts, both big and small, and um... Oh yeah! Exposing the corrupt government that's stealing from the working class and using it for their own corrupt selfish pleasures! I'm not even kidding. You thought this game would just be a cute little Animal Crossing experience? Well, I mean, it definitely has its moments, but HELL NO! All of these little odd jobs are just a distraction to keep the government off of our trail while we expose them for the scum that they are! This game is chock full of charm, mainly in the dialogue and actions of Turnip Boy himself, and at one point, the game gives you an option to tear up a book on how to do your taxes. I love it. I love it so much! If all of this sounds appealing, don't pass up on Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. As well as the sequel, Waffle Boy Commits Tax Evasion. I won't say any more. Dragon marked for death. Yes, thank you. 
Now here's a game I've seen nobody, literally nobody talk about, Dragon Marked for Death. A side-scrolling action RPG with some of the best everything the console has to offer. You have four heroes to choose from, all with unique playstyles that are very different from one another. For example, the warrior is incredibly heavy, he hits hard for sure, but his movement is limited with a focus on guarding. Meanwhile, the shinobi is super floaty and combo heavy, landing hit after hit after hit after hit. It's super satisfying. The game functions in a manner similar to Monster Hunter. You have this main village acting as your hub where you need to accept different quests, returning to the same levels multiple times but with different paths, enemies, and objectives. Also similar to Monster Hunter, the game is nearly impossible single player! Yeah, I had to learn that the hard way. The game swarms you with enemies, and it's really overwhelming. The game utilizes both online and offline multiplayer. Playing with friends is really where this game shines, especially if they've chosen a different class than you. Their unique abilities come into play and help you reach new areas, defeat tougher enemies, and just all around look cool. Dragon Marked for Death is very Metroidvania-esque to an extent. These levels are massive and they can be pretty easy to get lost in. There aren't too many great multiplayer games on the Switch that don't involve Mario. So a full-on action RPG like this is really welcomed in my eyes. In order to play co-op, every person will need their own Switch and copy of the game, which is giving me hella Four Swords flashbacks! But in a massive dungeon crawler like this, it's for the best. Just get together with some friends, hang out in the same room, and have yourselves an epic anime adventure. Tori 3D, a game I mentioned once in a bad eShop Games video as a joke, where I praised the game, but now I can actually put it in a video where it belongs. So in this game you control a bird. He's cute, instant classic. It's a very simple 3D platformer, but this game is proof that sometimes simple is better. The game doesn't do anything groundbreaking. I mean, look at it. Looks pretty basic to me. But what it does, it does incredibly well. It fine-tunes its simplicity to give the player the best experience it can. The graphics and setting, though, I don't know. For some reason, it's giving me creepypasta vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like, the game is just too bright and cheery. Like, if we keep playing, we'll eventually end up on a... a dark, empty void of nothing. Uh, hey, why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> Looks like we finally might get an answer to that age-old question. Anyway, Tori 3D is probably like one of the best 3D platformers to come out in the past six years. Why six? I don't know, it sounds like a solid number. And it's only a dollar. A dollar? Maybe even less than that if Nintendo's gonna have some sale. You can't get anything for a dollar these days in this economy. Let's ask the age-old question. What if blank was anime. In today's case, what if Mega Man was anime? Please, tell us where the amusement park is. Oh, okay, good point. Okay, what if Mega Man was made for super duper weebs? You'd get Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger. Just that name alone invokes the power of God and anime by your side. The game is a side-scrolling shooter, actually made by Inti Creates, the same company that made Dragon Marked for Death, which is why there are a lot of similarities both visually and gameplay-wise. As much as I love Mega Man, sometimes I want a game with a little more energy and chaos. Maybe it's my ADHD, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. And Luminous Avenger itches that scratch perfectly, just flying around, blasting everything first and asking questions later. There is a story involving, you know, anime, things, and jailbait. I don't know, I just end up skipping it to get back to the blasting. I don't have much to say about this game. I honestly just chose it because it's so satisfying to look at and turn your brain off to. So shout out to the Gunvolt Chronicles. There's apparently another game in the series on the Switch called Mighty Gunvolt Burst. The game and style is much more toned down to be more reminiscent of an NES game, like Mega Man. And Mighty Number no. 9 is playable for some reason, but at least, at least in this game, it's actually fun, so I shouldn't complain. And lastly, but not leastly, we have Forager. Forager is a 2D open world game inspired by exploration, farming, and crafting. It's a nice chill time. Yeah, the obvious comparisons to Minecraft, Terraria, and Stardew Valley are present, but whatever, Forager does it really well. It has a bit of everything. The relaxing farming and crafting aspects that allow you to just turn on the game for 10 minutes and just do a bit of those tasks, as well as the boss battles to clear out your land and make it a haven. There's a bit of an RPG element thrown into the game, where you actually need to buy land 
content in order to explore it and shape it to your liking, as well as learning skills that help you both in the quality of life aspects of the game, as well as the combat. I'm not sure how I feel about controlling odd ones out though, I mean that's like to each their own I guess. Yeah man, I mean I'm not gonna sit here for 20 minutes explaining to you how Minecraft works. If you're into these kind of games, then you're gonna be into this one as well. And those were just a few hidden gems on the Switch that I personally think you should check out. Let me know your favorite hidden gem on the Switch because I'm always on the lookout for more. And like they say in Italy, I'll see you around, buckaroo.